check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. And then we had, I thought this segment was awesome. The Cody Rhodes segment? Cody and Roman meeting at Georgia Tech. Yeah, that was, I mean, I just loved the way it was shot. I loved the verbiage. Um, I thought it was an excellent segment. Um, uh, let's see. So, so Heyman was very strongly involved. Uh, Rob Fee, Jeremy Borash. There's others, but you could tell immediately that Jer Jeremy Borash was involved because immediately we got a shot with a drone. And yeah. uh, that's Jeremy Borash stuff. Yeah, he he is awesome at this, and uh, well, obviously they're all awesome. So they end up at uh, Georgia Tech, and Roman explains that, you know, I had years on this field. Yeah, he played it. He played at Georgia Tech. He was all ACC uh, lineman. You know, um, I mean, he was a good. He was. I mean, I remember when he played college football. He was. He was a good player. I mean, in the sense of, um, you know, like. I thought he would go to the NFL, and I'm not really sure. You know, I mean, he wasn't drafted or anything. He ended up playing in Canada. But but he was a good college player, and he had size. And he was like 330 pounds when he was playing in college. It was not the same. I mean, just a, you know, he dropped a ton of weight to be a pro wrestler. So he says, this is my field, therefore it's by, by, my by, stadium. By, 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 by the way, by the way, um, um, Brock Recksteiner, who is uh, Scott's son, to, uh, yesterday – um, caught an 85-yard touchdown pass, and uh, he's playing for Jacksonville State against, um, I believe it was uh, Mississippi State, um, but whatever it was. Um, so, yeah, he's, uh, you know, so it's another Rex Steiner on the way. You know, Brock, Ste Brock Rex Steiner. So he uh, says this Georgia Tech, it's my stadium, it's my city. And, of course, Georgia Tech is in Atlanta, so Cody says, well, and on the other side of the stadium is center stage, the former Omni, now State Farm Arena. My Techwood family Drive. is bled here. Techwood Drive, where the TBS studios were, that, this, they, that they did wrestling for, for years and years before center stage. Says, this might be your field, but this is my home. So Roman says, enough of that. You've signed yourself into this lose-lose situation. You've got everything to lose here. You're dealing with people that have nothing to lose, including me. They took Jimmy, they took my wise man, they took my bloodline, my Ula Fall. I don't have anything for the first time in a long time. All this weight is on your neck now. And Cody said, well, I told you before that first WrestleMania this was going to happen. You're going to be a chief without a tribe. They did take everything. But if you look around WWE, we've got a tribal chief. It's not you. And we have a champion, and it's not you. So if you can't even beat your own bloodline, who is standing here right now? It's the guy they used to call Roman Reigns. And Roman says, what do you want? And Cody says, I want your word that you'll have my back so I can have yours. And Roman says, I give you my word. But when this is all said and done, I'm taking back what's mine. And he goes to leave, and Cody gets in his way and says, it's not yours to take. And so Roman says, you're in my way. So Cody steps aside, and Roman says, no, you're in my way in life. So they are teasing another mm. match one of these days, long they down the road. Should, they, they should do another match. But in the meantime, they're uh, teaming up. It makes absolutely no sense not to do another match. Well, I'm sure they will someday, yeah. Yeah. I thought this was extremely well done. I extremely was, well done. I thought it was an excellent segment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Kevin Owens is watching, and he's asked, what do you think of this? And he storms off. Giovanni Vinci, Apollo Cruz. They went longer than 30 seconds. Vinci ended up hitting his, uh, going for his power bomb. Apollo rolled him up, pinned him again. So Vinci snapped and killed him with a brain buster. This was how Vince used to try to not get guys over. Hmm. And uh, he ain't getting over, so. That's that's a good one to copy, you know. Yeah. It's just a prelim feud. I mean, I never, look, I never thought that they would do anything with Vinci past a certain level. Well, they're I definitely mean, I... not at this point. Well, they're they're tr they're trying, but I mean I don't know what he, it's like it's like, I don't know what he really brings to the table. It's like he's not bad, but in this day and age, not bad. It's like everybody's not bad, so it's like what what does he got? Like he's he's got a you know, he's got a nice physique. Lots of guys got nice physiques, you know. Is he a great promo? Not really. He's a great wrestler. He's a good wrestler, but but you know. Like what? He doesn't stand out to me at all. I mean, they try to do that James Bond deal with him, 
doesn't fit. Nobody buys it. So it's going to be tough sledding for him. But, um, I mean, you know, he might he might be, you know, guy on the roster, um, putting people over, winning every now and then, getting undercard feuds. But I don't see him as a as any kind of like a serious guy or anything like that. So Kevin Owens comes out for a promo and he says, people have been asking me what I feel about this Cody thing, teaming with Roman after everything the bloodline did to me over the years. I have to be honest, he says, but he's interrupted by the bloodline. So Tamatanga comes out and he's the right-hand man and they're angry about how the tribal their tribal chief was embarrassed and he says they'll get what's coming to them, Roman and Cody, at Bad Blood. But tonight, Kevin... We're going to do one on you. So Kevin says, uh, get in this ring so I can kick your ass. He's immediately destroyed three on one. Gargano and Ciampa run down to make the save. Clear the ring, hit Tom with the shatter machine. Nick Aldis comes out, announces a six-man for the main event. But all right, six-man for the main event, DIY. and mm-hmm. All right, well. We had uh, Bailey and Naomi having a meeting backstage. Minor tension. They agreed to give each other a title shot if they won. So it's Tiffany and Nia versus Bailey and Naomi in a tornado match. And my God, I mean, they worked hard, but this thing was so sloppy. I mean, they were just, this got weird. This was out of position. Bailey and Nia at one point both made a cover and the ref counted and the answers were like, what happens if both people, they, no one had any idea what was going on. So finally, at the end, actually, that was done. That that spot was done on purpose. Tiffany hits the one D, or they hit the one D on Tiffany. Nia hits the Samoan drop on Bailey. Naomi dives in, and literally there is a pile of bodies. You can't see what's up, what's down, and Naomi's feet are under the ropes, and the referee counts anyway, and rules that both Bailey and Naomi won. So, this was a mess. Yeah, but, normally, uh, normally that would be a finish to set up a three-way. Yes, but, but they didn't do a three-way this time. They're going to do a singles match next Friday. This coming Friday, it was it was bizarre because Nick Aldis meets with them, and he says there can be only one. <laughs> and I was like, why? Why? I that know. doesn't make any sense. I know, especially since like the they they've done a million precedents that are always a three-way. Yes, thousands of times, but this time there can be only one. So they have to wrestle next week to determine who gets Nia. We had a completely ridiculous video of Chelsea training for a dumpster match with Meechin. Total comedy. Mm-hmm. That's coming up in two weeks. Well, she's pretty good at what she does, but um, and that's why they're doing it. Um, you know, just the, you know, the idea of this, you know, the idea that she's repulsed by garbage and they're gonna dump garbage on her probably. So that's the whole deal. So that's on. That's in two weeks, not this coming Friday. Then we add. Kevin Owens and the Street Profits versus the Tongans and Jacob Fatu. They attack DIY before the bell. They go to commercial. They come back, and they have been replaced by the Street Profits. So this was very much actually like a collision main event where they got a lot of time, and so multiple heat segments. Heat on Montez. Dawkins get the tag. Heat on him. He gets the hot tag to uh, back to Montez. And then finally we start getting the Kevin Owens comeback, and that's when the people really got into it. And he takes everybody out, goes up top for the senton, Fatu, this is important, goes for the senton, Fatu breaks it up, goes back up top, Tama cuts him off, Kevin Owens hits the twisting superplex, hits the stunner on Tongaloa, makes the cover. I'm sorry, he, hits, he makes the cover on, uh, on uh, Tama Tonga. But Tongaloa... Pulls Kevin Owens out of the ring to break up the pin. And the ref rang the bell. For DQ. Apparently this was the secret rule. You, uh... That's been done. Except it's, it's, it's done all the time. I know. It, it was ridiculous. It was like multiple pins were broken up in this match. But this pin, was it, this breakup was a disqualification. Yeah. So the ref calls for the bell. The fans are booing because they have absolutely no idea whether this is a DQ. The guy that broke it up is in the match... And so the announcers merely say the referee had no choice. So this was a stupid finish. He 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 had it. Well, that's just a way to. They didn't want to beat the street profits and Kevin. So this is what they did. They, yeah. So they, why didn't they just have DIY in there and beat Gargano and Champa? Uh, probably because they wanted to. Do they the don't want to beat the, anybody. 
Well, they'll beat Gargano and Ciampa. They beat them up. You know, they're there to be. They were there to be beaten up uh, later in the show anyway. Well, they came out to break up the uh, brawl as they're being heels killing the baby faces afterwards. They get killed as well. And finally, Cody runs down with a chair, takes out the Tongans. Fatu kicks a chair out of his hand, but Cody hits him with the Cody cutter. Fatu gets sent packing. And then Kevin picks up the chair, and Cody's celebrating. He's looking outside the ring. Kevin's behind him, and Kevin's got this chair. And the fans are like, oh, my God. We're going to see the Kevin Owens turn. And Cody's all celebrating. He's all back turned. And then finally he turns around, and Kevin puts the chair down. And the fans booed because they wanted to see the turn, but they they didn't get it. They want to see the turn, absolutely. And then Cody offered a handshake, and Kevin gave it to him, and they booed again. So they know that Kevin's turning. It's mm-hmm. coming. They just don't know when. And aside from this stupid finish here, I thought this was a pretty damn good show. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.